There is an interesting presidential candidate in the U.S. called Andrew Yang. Hello, I'm Andrew Yang, and I'm running for president as a Democrat in 2020. This guy promises a universal basic income of $1,000 per month for every American citizen. He's a tech guy outside of current political establishment, and he looks very honest. Lots of young people support him, and he managed to raise an incredible amount of money for his political campaign. This guy really likes math. So do I. Under my plan, Every American adult will receive $1,000 a month, free and clear. All right, Young, this is a very nice proposal, but who's going to pay for this? A new tax that falls on Amazon and the biggest winners from AI and new technologies. The way to do that is to join every other industrialized economy and have a value-added tax. With a value-added tax, the American public would receive a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every robot. Wait, 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 wait. I live in Switzerland and we do have value-added tax, so-called VAT, and it doesn't seem to tax any companies. In opposite, it actually taxes the end consumer. Let me explain the Young's manipulation in here and try to explain you what exactly is VAT. In short, VAT is just a better version of current sales tax which you have in the US. Currently, if you're buying a new camera or you're going to the restaurant in the US, you have to pay an additional tax on your final bill. If you're getting a haircut or you're taking an Uber, you don't have to pay anything. Every state in the city has its own tax rate and what is taxable and what is not, but generally something which is tangible is taxable, something which is service is not taxable. So VOD is basically just an advanced and more fair version of sales tax, which taxes all your services like Uber, haircuts, whatever. But there is one important detail, you only pay the tax on the value added, not on the full price. Let's see how this taxes works from the business perspective. First, let's look at the current situation and let's assume that we have a sales tax of 10%. Let's say we have a lock company which produces a bunch of wood and this company sells the wood to the furniture maker and it costs $100. Then the furniture maker makes the furniture and sells this uh, furniture to the store uh, which costs $600. And then finally the store sells this furniture to the customer and it costs $1,000. When you have a transaction between lock company and furniture maker, there will be no sales tax added because furniture maker is a company and you only apply the sales tax on the final transaction. Same will apply for furniture maker and store. So at the end we will get $100 tax on goods and services. And all these 100 bucks coming from the customer. Let's compare this to what tax of 10%. In this case, if the lock company wants to sell the wood to furniture maker, the furniture maker has to pay a VAT of 10%. So instead of paying $100, he has to pay $110 to the lock company. And lock company will pay $10 to the government. The next transaction is a little bit different. In order to buy a furniture from furniture maker, the store has to pay $660, meaning like 600 plus 10% VAT, but the furniture maker doesn't have to pay $60 back to the government because he already paid $10 to lock company, which paid this $10 to the government. So instead of paying $60 to the government, you only paid 50. That's why it's called tax on the added value. So basically you had 100, which was taxed at the first transaction, then you added 500, and then you have to pay 10% out of this 500. If you look at the next transaction, you have a customer which has to pay $1,000 plus 10% VAT, which is $100. And this is being paid to the store, but now store can deduct the previously paid tax, which was $60 meaning that the store will pass only $40 to the government. It looks a bit tricky at the beginning, but as you can see, there is absolutely no difference in the final tax which government will get. And again, the whole responsibility for this tax is on customers. The only difference is that this tax is being paid to the government through different organizations. Let's see how this affects the tech companies. For example, you had an Uber ride for $60 and in current situation, uh, you just paid $60, there is absolutely no tax being taken. In a situation of VAT, you have an additional 10% VAT tax, which is being charged from the customer, transferred to Uber, and Uber is responsible to pay the $6 to the government. In this case, government will earn $6 more, but where are these $6 coming from? Is it coming from Uber Corporation or it comes from you? I mean, it's pretty clear it comes from you. Let's look at Amazon. Its primary business is to send packages. Almost all of these transactions are already charged with the sales tax. 
So there will be absolutely no difference if you introduce VOD. Another business from Amazon is Kindle Books. Currently, if you buy a Kindle book, you don't have to pay any sales tax. So if you introduce VOD, you will have to pay additional tax on this. Again, who are you taxing? Amazon or yourself? Uh, probably yourself. Everyone knows that Amazon is the big player in the computational market. If you want to host your website or do some computation, you can pay some money to Amazon and it's completely sales tax free. So if you introduce VOD, there will be additional tax applied on Amazon Cloud. Isn't it amazing? Let's look at the real world example and see whether it's actually true. Let's assume we have a furniture store and it needs to host its website and it has to pay $1 to Amazon. And you have a customer which buys some cheap furniture for $60. In the current war, you don't have any tax between Amazon and furniture store, but you do have a sales tax between furniture store and the customer. So a customer has to pay $6 more. If we introduce VOD in here, this $1 transactions will be taxed and you have to pay 10 cents to the government. Then you have a furniture store which charges $60 from the customer and customer actually pays $6 extra as a VOD. But then the trick here is the furniture store already paid 10 cents. So the government will only get $5.90 from the furniture store. In this particular case, there is no difference between sales tax and VOD and the same $6 will be charged from the end customers and there will be absolutely zero tax on Amazon de facto. Let's add Facebook to the game. Let's assume that the furniture store needs to spend $1 for advertisement for its own business on Facebook. In this case, furniture store has to pay $1.10 because it's VAT, but again, you can deduct this 10 cents out of your final VAT, which you take from the customer. And at the end of the day, there is absolutely no difference between sales tax and VAT. Andrian proposal won't charge any money from the big tech companies. Instead, it will charge more money from normal, regular people like you and me. But probably it's still okay because you're gonna get $1,000 per month for free. Let's see how much VAT should generate to make this possible. First, let's calculate the percentage of 18 plus US citizens. Google says that 90% of US population are citizen and 25% of US population are under 18. And we will get that 67.5% of the population of US are 18 plus citizens. To make these people getting $1,000 per month for free, you need to ensure that the whole population generates $675 of VAT tax per month on average. First, let's see how much US is currently generating by sales tax. There is this OECD stats page which publishes all different types of taxes per different countries per different years. And US made 385 billion with a population of 325 million, which means that every resident contributes $1,200 per year, which is $98 per month. Now we need to raise $675 more per capita, which means that we have to increase the current sales tax by almost 7x. But it's okay, we can make it. It's hard to estimate what is the current average sales tax in US, but roughly, I believe it's 7%. If you will introduce VOD, all your services will be taxed, which means that all your Uber rides, haircut, Netflix subscription, medical expenses, educational expenses, this all will be subject of VOD tax. I have no idea how to estimate how much people do spend on those things on average, but there is a trick. I live in Switzerland, which has VOD system, and in 2017, it was 8% which is very close to 7% estimation of US sales tax. Let me use the same page and calculate how much every Swiss resident contributes to VAT tax, which is $271 per month. Switzerland is slightly richer than US, so we need to compare uh, gross domestic products per capita in 2017 and then make our decisions. So let's assume that Swiss people spend 34% more. Therefore, if we introduce VAT in US, we will get $202 per capita meaning that we will collect $104 more than we are currently are with the sales tax. Therefore, we have a $500 deficit to make universal basic income. Okay, probably Andrew Young didn't tell us something very important. He's not only want to introduce VAT, but also increase the current tax rate. VAT is being adopted by different countries in Europe. For example, in Germany, it's 18%, in Denmark is 25%, and the highest I know in Europe is Hungary, which is 27%. Let's see what happens if we raise VAT tax up to 27%. If in case of 7% VAT, we are getting $202 of a tax, it means that the average person spends 
$885. And now we can calculate the tax income for 27% VAT, which will make $779, which is 681% raised from the current sales tax. All right, we made it. So basically, if we make everyone's life 20% more expensive, we can introduce a thousand dollars universal basic income. Wow. But this is not the end of the analysis. Let's see what happened with this $1,000 in the world when you have a 27% of what? Andrew Young also told us that he supports $15 per hour minimum wage. If you earn $15 per hour and you work for full time, after all the calculation, you can see that you will get a $2,105 after income tax per month. Let's assume that half of this money is currently being spent on sales tax items and half of them is not. Basically, you have $2,033 to spend after all taxes. With the Young proposal, you will get plus $1,000, but then you have to pay 27% of the tax because everything is subject of what right now, which means that you will get $2,444 after all tax. This means that you're actually getting $411 per month instead of promised $1,000. $400 is definitely better than nothing, but this is the lowest end of the salary. Let's look at the lowest middle class. Let's assume you're getting $25 per hour, which means 52K per year and $3,400 per month after income tax. If we do exactly the same calculation regarding to sales and VAT tax, you will see that at the end, you will get $180 more instead of $1,000. And this is lower middle class. Would that amount of money help the struggling middle class? I don't think so. To summarize, introducing VAT of 27% in US will actually make UBI of $1,000. Only the low incomers and unemployed people will get some real money, but not the $1,000. Low middle class will get a tiny fraction of $180 per month instead of $1,000 middle and upper middle class will pay for this. And the tech companies won't be affected. Finally, 10% of population which are non-citizen of US will have their life 20% more expensive. That's a simple math. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There will be more interesting videos like this. Bye.